In this video, I'll be going through the 2024 Level 2 Mechanics exam. Question 1. Jono and Tony are in the kitchen. Their dog is sitting on the floor next to them when the neighbour's dog comes in and playfully chases it around the table. The dog runs in a circle on the floor around the table. Add a labelled arrow to the diagram below to show the force acting on the dog as it runs in a circle at a constant speed. Because the dog is running in a circle, it must be experiencing a centripetal force, which is towards the centre of the circle. The mass of the dog is 10 kilograms, the dog is moving at 0.8 meters per second, and the centripetal force is 15 newtons. Calculate the radius of the dog's path. We know that the centripetal force is equal to the mass times velocity squared over r. We can solve that for r by swapping these two around. Since we know all of these values, we just need to put our numbers in, which gives me 0 0.50 meters to two significant figures. On the other side of the table, the dog hits a slippery patch of the floor and slides off at a tangent. Use physics principles to explain the dog's velocity immediately after it starts moving off at a tangent. Prior to slipping, the dog was experiencing a centripetal force that was constantly changing its velocity in this direction here. When the dog slips, it loses friction, and therefore it loses its centripetal force, and the dog will continue in the direction of its existing velocity, which is at a tangent to the circle. As Fc is no longer acting, the dog moves at a constant velocity tangent to the circle. The dog slides along the floor towards Jono. Jono reaches down and cushions the dog as it slides into him by putting out his arms and then gradually bringing them in towards him. The dog takes two seconds to come to a rest unharmed. Use physics principles to explain why Jono put out his arms to cushion the dog, rather than let the dog stop quickly in 0.1 seconds. Start by calculating the force experienced by the dog in the cushioned collision, two seconds. In the case where the dog is cushioned, we can use the equation that our force is going to be equal to the change in momentum divided by the duration over which it changed. To find our change in momentum, which is going to be the same in both our cushioned and uncushioned cases, we need our mass and velocity. The mass was 10 kilograms and our velocity was 0.87, which gives us 8.7 kilogram meters per second. Putting that number in and dividing by our time of 2 seconds, we get 4.4 newtons to two significant figures. For our uncushioned example, we do the same equation with the same change in momentum of 8.7, except now our duration is 0.1, which gives us 87 newtons. And so by increasing the duration of the collision, as the change in momentum is the same, the force must be less. Jono releases his 10 kilogram dog and it runs directly towards the neighbor at 1.1 meters per second. The neighbor's dog, mass 12 kilograms, runs directly towards Jono's dog. They collide, stick together and slide across the floor at 0.3 meters per second. Calculate the speed that the neighbor's dog was moving at before the collision. For this question, we need to use conservation of momentum which is that the momentum initially must equal the momentum finally. Our initial momentum was the momentum of this dog here. Its mass is 12 and its velocity is V, which is what we're trying to find. Adding our momentum of this dog here, except because it's in the opposite direction, the velocity is negative, so it's a negative momentum. The dog has a mass of 10 and a velocity of 1.1. Our momentum finally is the total mass of our two dogs, so 12 plus 10, multiplied by their combined velocity, which is 0.3. To solve this for V, we first add 10 times 1.1 to both sides, and then divide both sides by 12, which gives me 1.5 meters per second to two significant figures. Question two. Tony decides to make a cake. Tony and Jono measure 0.11 kilograms of flour using a kitchen balance as shown below. 
There are three springs in the balance. Each gets compressed 0.01 meters when the flower is added. The simplified diagram shows the springs in the balance. Add labelled arrows to the diagram above right with the flower to show the two forces acting on the flower. We have the weight force of the flower, our force of gravity, and we have the support force of the scales upwards. Important to this question is that both of these forces are the same size, as we know the flower must be balanced. Calculate the spring constant for one spring. Hooke's law tells us that the force is equal to negative kx, which means that k is equal to negative f over x. The negative sign is just because either our force or x must be negative, such that this negative will cancel out and our final spring constant must be positive. We know that our spring is displaced by 0.01 meters. And we know our force is going to be our mass here, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Except because that force is distributed amongst three springs, we also need to divide it by three. Which gives me 36 newtons per meter to two significant figures. When Jono brings the groceries to the front door, he has a choice of climbing the stairs or using the ramp. He has found that it takes less time to go up the ramp than the stairs. Compare both routes by considering the work done, the force required and the power. Because they both reach the same height, the work done is going to be the same. Recall that work is force times distance, and for the ramp the distance is longer, so the force must be less. Lastly for our power, recall that we're told that it takes less time to go up the ramp. Power is work over time, and the time is less for the ramp, so the power must be greater. Tony is using a spice rack hanging by wires above the workbench as shown below. The ginger spice has a mass of 0.03 kilograms, the salt 0.5 kilograms, and the uniform rack has a mass of 0.37 kilograms and is 0.4 meters long. The ginger spice is placed 0.15 meters and the salt is placed 0.05 meters from the left hand wire, as shown below. The maximum tension force that each wire can provide is 5 newtons. State the conditions required for the spice rack to be in equilibrium. That is, that the net force and net torque are zero. By performing suitable calculations, decide if the wires can hold the spice rack with the ginger and bag of salt. And so our ginger is here, and our salt is here. Knowing the masses of each, we can find their forces, and knowing that in the distance we can find their torques. We also can't forget that the uniform rack has a mass of 0.37, so it too will exert a torque. What we now need to do is to find the force at each wire and compare it to 5 newtons. To do this, we can start with our second statement here, that the net torque must be zero. That means that the clockwise torque must be equal to the counterclockwise torque. If this is wire A and this is wire B, then because these salt and ginger are closer to wire A, it must have a larger force. So we'll find that force, because if it's greater than 5 newtons then we know the spice rack cannot hold up the ginger and bag of salt. To do that we need to make a pivot right here, which has the benefit of not requiring any knowledge about the force at this location, since its distance from the pivot is 0 and the torque therefore is 0 from this location. Making the pivot here makes these two counterclockwise torques because they're trying to turn the clock, as it were, in the counterclockwise direction, as is the torque produced by the weight of the beam. The torque provided by wire A, however, is in the clockwise direction. So our clockwise torque is the torque from A, whereas our counterclockwise torques are the torque from our salt, plus the torque from our ginger, plus the torque from our rack. Replacing those torques with their forces times their distances from the pivot, our distance to the pivot from our torque A is the full length 0.4 meters. 
The distance from the salt to our pivot B is 0.4 meters minus 0.05, which gives me 0.35 meters. The distance to our ginger is our full 0.4 minus 0.15, which gives me 0.25. And finally, the torque from the rack is acting at half the distance, which is 0.2. Solving this for FA, which is what we're trying to find, by dividing both sides by 0.4. Putting our masses and the acceleration due to gravity in for our forces. Which gives me 6.3 newtons to two significant figures, which is greater than the 5 newtons our wire can provide. And so the rack will fall. Question 3. Tony is going to add apples to the cake. His friend Jono rolls an apple along the table. The apple leaves his hand at 0.5 meters per second and stops in front of Tony. It takes 4 seconds to roll along the table top. Calculate the acceleration of the apple. Acceleration is our change in velocity over our change in time, where our change in velocity is 0.56, and our change in time is 4 seconds, which gives me 0.14 meters per second per second. Tony now throws the apple to Jono. The angle of the throw is 40 degrees, and the initial velocity is 5 meters per second, as shown in the diagram below. Calculate the vertical and horizontal components of the initial velocity. If our overall velocity is 5 meters per second and our angle is 40 degrees, then our vertical component of the velocity is going to be 5 sine of our angle of 40 and our horizontal component is going to be the same but with a cosine. You can verify this the long way around by doing Sokotoa, where if we have our object going like that at our angle theta, our horizontal side is going to be our adjacent side, and our vertical is going to be our opposite. And so we use the SO relationship for our vertical and the Ka relationship for our horizontal. That gives me 3.2 and 3.8 meters per second to two significant figures. Explain the motion of the apple shown below. Identify the type of motion. This type of motion where we have both horizontal and vertical components is projectile motion. For the points A, B and C on the appropriate diagram above, add labelled arrows of the appropriate length to show the forces if any acting on the apple. The only force acting is our force of gravity which is always going to point downwards and is always going to be the same length. The direction of the velocity of the apple at the start of its motion is at any point going to be at a tangent to the path at the start of the motion, that is this direction here, and at the finish of the motion, that is this direction here. In between, our direction is tangential like this, and the arrow is smaller because although the horizontal velocity is the same in all cases, the vertical velocity is zero at the top. And so the overall velocity at B will be smaller. Describe how the vertical velocity and horizontal velocity of the apple change throughout its flight. The horizontal velocity is constant, however the vertical velocity upwards decreases to zero as it moves to the top, then increases in the downwards direction. This is due to the constant downwards acceleration due to gravity. The ceiling is 1.5 meters above the table surface. By calculating the maximum height reached by the apple, as well as the horizontal distance covered, determine whether the apple will reach Tony 2 meters away. Let's first find the time of flight. To do this, we know that the initial vertical velocity is what we found earlier to be 3.2. We know the acceleration due to gravity is going to be negative 9.8. And we also know that at the end of the journey, the final velocity is going to be the same 3.2, except in this case, it's going to be negative. Knowing these, we should be able to find the time. 
Our trick for choosing our kinematic equation is to choose the equation that doesn't have a quantity that we're not given and not interested in. In this case, while we're finding the time of flight, we don't know and don't care for the height of the ball. We'll care about that later. And so our equation without distance is VF equals VI plus AT. Rearranging this for time by first subtracting VI from both sides. And now dividing both sides by the acceleration. Putting our numbers in. Gives me 0 0.65 seconds. And now to find our maximum height, where we know our time is going to be 0 0.65 divided by 2. Since our apple will reach its maximum height halfway through the journey, we can use any of the equations that contain distance. I'm going to use d equals vit plus half at squared. Putting our numbers in. Gives me 0 0.52 meters to two significant figures which means that our height is fine, it is not going to hit the ceiling. And finally we need to find the horizontal distance to determine if it's going to reach Tony 2 meters away. To find our horizontal distance, we can use just our velocity is distance over time. Rearrange for D is VT, where our velocity is our horizontal velocity we found earlier, 3.8. And our time is the overall time, which is 0 0.65. Which gives me 2.5 meters to two significant figures, which is more than two meters. And so the ball not only reaches Tony, it also doesn't hit the ceiling.